Hi, hello, my name is Gabby and let's go really quickly into this because this is going to be a long video. So this week we're talking about House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Once again, I'm going to go really fast because in the second part of this video, I invited a person who recommended this book and we're having a full on discussion about everything in it for the like spoilery part. So let's really quickly wrap up what is the non-spoilery part. First of all, you need to read this book. It's not a question. You need to. This book is written in such an interesting way. If you like meta story specifically, you need to read this book. It's written in three different metas. So there is the most like the first layer is this guy called Navitson. He finds this house like he moves. He's a photographer. He moves into this country house with his wife and the house starts growing like at one point he's trying to make calculations for a shelf or something and there's one inch too much but it doesn't make sense with the exterior and then there's corridors appearing and this house is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside and being a photographer Navidson once he realizes that his house is fucked up he spends a lot of time documenting it so he makes a couple of movies so there's a five and a half minute hallway then there's the Karen tapes another tape and then there's the, the final movie which is called the Navitson records I'm pretty sure which is also the name of the book we're reading if that makes sense the second layer is on an old man that wrote like an essay about the house so about Navitson's story it's called the Navitson records and he is just like writing everything so he's describing what the movie is like he adds a scientific explanation he adds a lot of context and a lot of like it's a, it's an essay right and then the third layer is our main character Johnny Johnny Truant which finds the essay like draft I guess uh, because the author, the old man, died. And then Johnny, by reading it, realizes that a lot of stuff don't make sense because Navitson doesn't exist. The house doesn't exist. There's nothing there. And the man was blind. It feels maybe contrived like this, but it is a very, very interesting book. It really grabs you by the neck and like forces you to read it. And it is really, really good. I highly recommend it. It has a lot of themes. Um, Like Johnny is very troubled. So he has like addiction issues, memory issues issues um he has a lot of trauma specifically according with his mom and the themes are very interesting so there's a big overarching theme of the minotaur which i think is so interesting but there's also a lot of themes of family issues of r different references you can see like almost anything in that book and i highly highly recommend it it's really long but it reads really fast because there's like a couple of pages like a couple of hundred pages which all have almost nothing on them because that is one of the selling point of the book is the page um the page constitution the way that the author arranged the pages is so interesting so cool so different i really really love it and i highly highly recommend it so now that i've did this little spiel let's go on everyone let's welcome angel my great friend angel to the prowl and let's talk about house of peace so let's go on to the more spoilery part of the video, I guess. So I brought my good friend Angel with me. So do you want to represent yourself? I know you were there before, but hi. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Angel. I draw sometimes. <laughs> and they are my very best friend. They are coming over here because this book of mental illness was brought on to me because of them. So I think it yes, is just yes. fair for me to give them mental issues by recording their thoughts on it. Absolutely. So maybe the first question is, how did you discover the book? Okay, yeah, it's a pretty long story. Well, maybe not. Um, <laughs> years ago, like years ago, I saw a video on YouTube that was like going in depth into the secrets and everything. And the video was very um, adamant at saying, if you, if you haven't read the book, go read it and then come back to this video and i was like oh maybe i'll check it out later and then i forgot about it <laughs> and then um fucking fast forward to now this year um i somehow see the book again i think when i was buying other books on amazon and i was like oh right i heard about this book i heard good like a couple things about this book i'll check it out and i buy it and i read it and i go insane it's so <laughs> Yeah, it's a I very... understand why people went insane over that book in the first place. Yeah, this book is very, very, um, I think it's a very special book. It's a very unique type of book, for sure. Um, 
And for the sake of trying to keep this short positive review short, let's go on to the little things that I want to talk about. So let's start with the characters. Uh, for the sake of that, I'm going to focus on the three like main meta characters. So let's start with the most in meta character, which is Navitson. So like the first layer of story. Navitson is a very interesting character to me because he feels so issued. <laughs> Like <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Like, from the outside looking in, I feel like this character could be seen... Like, at the beginning of the story, you kind of see this character kind of as, um... Not a has-been, but, like, someone who's, like... You could uh, interpret or understand his arc as being, like, tired of being in the limelight, wanting to, like, have peace, but not being able to get away from the life of, like... Because he was famous, right? So, like, he was not able to, like take it away and that's why a lot of at the beginning the frictions between him and Karen his wife that that's where it came from at the beginning was the fact that she wanted a normal life and he really wanted to I think or at least that's how I interpreted it but he wasn't able in a way mm -hmm. to let go and I think he's a very interesting character because the more you read it and of course all of these are tinted by the layers of meta, but <laughs> the the way you read, the more the like story unfolds, the more you realize that he's just really fucked up. Like he has so much undealt issues, and yeah, there's a lot of things that he's not. I feel like he should have like dealt with before, and he's not able. And I feel like, in a way, I think the story is trying to portray that the house is. Not a punishment, as he thinks it is, but perhaps a way for him to go through his issues, maybe? Yeah, I mean, the house seems to do that for a lot of people. Um, I also think it's um, interesting how Navitson is a photographer. His whole mm -hmm. job has been to observe and document, and it shows a lot in his curiosity to explore the house. Because at first he's a bit reluctant because of his wife, mostly. Uh, but as like the more he goes into it, the more he just cannot stop himself from exploring the house because he has his natural curiosity to document things. Yeah, and that's so... Like, the way he explores the house and Karen is just having panic attacks and he's just like, well, boop, 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 I'm going to explore. And she's just, like, <laughs> dying. Is... Oh yeah, he he absolutely does not consider her feelings very much in, um, in those moments. As much as he wishes he could, he his curiosity or he thinks takes that over. He is. Yeah, because like, it... I think that, like, not to go into every story ever is about this, but I think that one of the <laughs> underlying themes of House of Leaves is definitely toxic masculinity. I think we need to talk about it a little bit, and I think that. Navitson, the way it is explored through Navitson specifically, is how he, like, has this impression that doing what he wants to do or what he feels like he, like, needs to do helps people around him somehow. Like, he doesn't feel to have that, like, perception that, like, people are different than him. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels like yeah. he, he thinks that by doing the right thing, he's gonna save everyone. Although, in this context, the right thing is just taking pictures of a house. And, like, Karen is freaking out, and he's just like, Well, it's really cool. <laughs> Talking of photography, I think we need to talk about that child. I don't... Do you remember the name of the picture that yes, fucked him up? Yes, uh, Delisle, yes. Any opinions on that storyline? <laughs> um, I mean, I do think it's a good commentary on... Because it's based on the real photograph, right? So, um... Yeah. It's a good commentary on the fact that, oh, the photographer for the real thing just was observing. Oh, um, and that real a, photography. A tragedy. While I was, like, reading House of Leaves and I came upon that, I, I did some research on the original photograph because I was, like, kind of baffled that it was real. And, um, like, when I realized that it ended in tragedy, the way that, like, he felt, like, so bad about this picture that he ended up, like, committing suicide, the original yeah. photographer, and knowing that this is, like, it, it's not, like, it's not reaching at all, it is a true, like, inspiration for the story of House of Leaves, kind of really, like, got real for a second in a really interesting and fun way, because this is where Navitson could have gone, 
This is perhaps where without the house, without Karen to ground him, without the story, he would not be able to have survived Delisle. I mean, like, even with the house, when he goes back into the house to explore for oh, the yeah. final time... He if, had no intention of Karen, coming back. If Karen wasn't there, he would have died. Yeah. So he, Karen well, was definitely there to ground him for that. Well, he had no intentions of coming back, which, once again, I think yeah. plays into the, like, self-sacrificing nature that he has, in which... I think, once again, not to overanalyze anything, but I also, that's what I'm doing, so it's fine. I think one <laughs> of the things is that after Delisle, he didn't see any purposes anymore because he was, like, kind of, like, seeing under, like, behind the uh, curtain. Like, that's the uh, Wizard of Oz reference, but, like, looking through the curtain, seeing that, like, reality of what he was doing was not like he thought it was, really. Yeah. And then everything crumbled onto him, and I think that like, the reason why he got so attached to the house is because his life was truly over for him. He really didn't think there was anything else that he could do. And now, like, being able to see that the house exists and there's something, like, it, it was like a new purpose, like a reborn purpose for him, which, I don't know, it's interesting to think about. Yeah, um, if you want to move on a little bit from that, uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier that it's a story about toxic masculinity. Yeah, and yeah, I completely agree. I think all the characters have a little bit of that in them. And yeah. I also think it's a story about trauma for all the characters that interact yeah, 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 or course. come into contact with the house. Mm -hmm. um, like, it's, it's very uh, straightforward in the book itself that mm -hmm. they mentioned that that's an effect that seems to be had on people when they interact with the house um mm -hmm. absolutely but, but it's uh it's interesting to see how trauma manifests differently in all these characters well yeah absolutely and it's really interesting to like specifically navitson i i like karen is not one of the main characters but i think she is honestly one of the characters that at the beginning i was the least interested in but the more i was reading the more sympathetic I got to Karen like and, and I think mm -hmm. that's the purpose of the book but like I think the more I understood where she stood from and I saw the tragedy in Karen's character because like Karen from the beginning is seen as everyone in her life including her fucking sister has a good for nothing cloud chasing whore which is fucked up and yeah, then but that's that's the way we're introduced to her and mm -hmm. as we go more into her and her trauma and what she's living we grow more sympathetic towards her yeah and yeah I, I do like i think karen's character like i love all of the characters of course like it's a 700 book 700 pages book if i didn't like them i wouldn't have got like into it that bad but karen was one of them that like every time i heard more about karen i was more and more intrigued by her and interested in knowing more she is a really, really interesting character, and I really like her, like, last arc. Like, when she's with uh, Daisy and Chad in New York, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then maybe. she, like, does interviews, and she's trying to figure out what's going on with the house. Because as much as Navitson, like, I think, once again, to talk about toxic masculinity and trauma, Navitson wants to figure out what is in the house, but doesn't really ask for outward help. Like, the only help he asks is for, like, already established friends, his brother yeah. and uh, like the, the trio of maniacs that died in the beginning. <laughs> but like, so he asked a little bit for help, but he's not doing research because I think in a way he thinks that nobody else can help him and he's the only one who can figure it out. Whereas Karen figures out very quickly that she cannot understand it. And then she does research and she's trying to help him that way. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting. Um, I know that every time we talk about the book and it comes on Daisy, you have a lot of choices, words to say. Do you want to talk about your relationship to the character of Daisy and Daisy Bell? Uh, it, listen, the song itself, <laughs> the song Daisy Bell, it has such a hold on me for some reason because it was one of the first songs um, sung by a computer. That's literally as far as my emotions go and that's why I latched on to the Daisy Bell section so much. I don't yeah. know it yeah, I don't know what um was the purpose of that, but it was it hit a lot for me. 
Yeah, well, I think it was to show, like, a little bit how he was losing his mind. Because, like, the section we're talking about in Daisy Bell is a section where uh, the text is no longer really a text. It becomes, like, a mumble of, like, thoughts and ideas. And at some point, it's just, like, three full pages of, like, music notes. And it's just, like, Daisy Daisy. Because Navitson's daughter is called Daisy. Like, and then he sings Daisy Bell. And, like, I think... I don't know what it means... But I really, really, like, like it. Um, yeah. And I think, unless you have something else to add for Navitson, the last thing I want to mention is, if you open the book, we have, we both have the same edition of the book, which I'm pretty sure it's the most recent. Like, it's still the first edition, technically. It's, like, the first edition, but it's a full-on color. It's, like, the most recent, like, version of it with, like, everything, like, in it. And mm -hmm. where was... Oh, yeah! And when you open the first, like, cover page... There's a collage image that's not at the end. There's another collage. And at one point, it was, like, 400 pages in, and I, like, I open it, and then I saw, like, a little bit of text that intrigued me. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up. Actually, <laughs> where's my helper piece? There it is. So, there's a little bit of text, and I read that, and it got so fucked up. It's like... Yeah, it's, perhaps I will alter the whole thing, kill both children. Murder is yeah. a better word. Uh, Chad scrambling to escape, almost making it to the front door where Karen waits, until a corner is in the foyer, in the foyer suddenly leaps forward and hews the boy in half. At the same time, Nevitson by the kitchen reaches for Daisy, uh, arrives a fraction of a second too late, his fingers grabbing the air, his eyes scratching after Daisy as she falls to her death. So I read that mid-book, and I was like, oh my god, is that a fucking spoiler for the book? Because I was like, Angel, I think it just got spoiled for the ending. Because I knew that Angel had a very close relationship with Daisy. So I was like, oh my god, Daisy fucking dies. Spoiler, she does yeah. not. But I read that mid-book, and I was like, oh my god. And then when I got at the end, and I was reminded of it, it was a, like, kind of eureka moment. And now let's talk about Zampano. Because I think that Zampano's whole story is fucked up. Because... What the fuck is wrong with this man? <laughs> because that piece of text we just read is in universe part of Zampano's writing, which just implies that the story of Navitson is real, but it's not, but it's real, but also Zampano wants to modify it and use it for his own good. It, like... Oh, it, but it, I think, it, it I sure think to add a little bit to that, like just talking about the note itself, it's written in Courier New. Which is the font Johnny uses. Mm -hmm. So, True. again. It, it's so, like, that's one of the thing with, like, the um, Zampano, like, Navitson's story. That's why I started with Navitson, because all of these characters add a layer of, like, self-reflection onto, like, Navitson's story. Mm -hmm. So, like, Navitson never existed. Or at least that's what's implied in a book. That Navitson is completely created by this old man, Zampano. This old man that is blind, that is not that well educated as we, like, learn throughout the book. That, like, he, like, had, like, m like not, not maybe, like, proper, like, university college degree. Which is not, like, oh, if you don't have that, you're not well educated. But what I mean is, like, not any specific, like qualification for what he's writing about although he's writing in a very like educational like essay format and um he was like a veteran i'm pretty sure because it talks at the end about how he had a lot of guns and he knew a lot about his like artillery and that's because he like served so like zampano is a very mysterious character that dies very quickly in the book that's how the last character we're going to talk in a little bit johnny gets a hold of it and so zampano is there He's blind. And he describes in very, very specific details the way that Navitson takes photos. But according to Johnny, Zampano never existed. Nobody knows of Zom uh No, sorry. Navitson never existed. Nobody ever heard of Navitson nor the Navitson records. Um, he went to the place where the house is supposed to exist and there's nothing there. It doesn't even... The place, the location does not exist. Zampano is a very mysterious, like, the way that he was writing. Because, like, right, the reason why this book is so interesting is because, like, all of the layers of story are, like, developing at the same time. It's, like, three meta completely, like, 
they're punching you in the face <laughs> at the same time, so you're kind of losing yourself into it. Which is the point, because that's what happens to Johnny, right? Like, yeah. the way Johnny gets the book is by harvesting them from the apartment of this dead guy in piles of pages, mismatched pages, that are written by various different people in various different orders. And, like, Zampano is a very, very interesting character in the way that we know nothing about him. Right, yeah. Because, um, he wrote about... He wrote about Navidson, but he did not write about himself. All we know yeah. about him is, like, maybe between the lines of his own writing and... Yeah, you can infer a lot of things about it, because, like, you can yeah. infer what he likes and what he enjoys by what he focuses on. And Johnny reveals that, too. Like, Johnny, somewhere, I'm pretty sure, mentions that, like, that's interesting that Zampano talks like this, because that implies that Zampano is, like, liking to that. But, yeah, Zampano doesn't write about himself, like, at all. And the only thing we know about him is that he was blind, he died, and he had a lot of, like, women coming to see him. Yeah. It, um, everything about his life can be gathered uh, between the lines and what Johnny knows of him when he's trying to put together the book. But even that, it's not direct accounts. It's all from the woman who wrote for Zampano or read him some things or, you know, tried to help him in some way to finish the book. Yeah, exactly. And it's... Ugh. Zampano's part is... He's gonna be the shortest character we're gonna talk about because clearly he's not allowed to say. But I think he is, like, a central piece. And I think it is part one of the mystery of the book, right? Did Zampano invent everything? Because I feel like the correct answer that is served to us is yes. But then the question that lies is how and why? And how did we get there? The, yeah, the answer would be yes, but then why did he die with claw marks around his body? The beast. The beast. Well... I think that now that we've mentioned the Beast, it's time to talk about my favorite character from the book, and I'm sure it is yours too. Absolutely. Our good old little Johnny Chewant. My little Beast. This little fucked up Chad. There's so much to say. There, there's so much to say. There's so much to say. He's a misogynist, and he's everything to me. He's a misogynist who fucks, which is so... Absolutely. He's like if an incel could get women. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So, uh, we've mentioned it before, but the way that Johnny gets a hold of this is because of his best friend, um, who's like, oh my god, this dead, de this whole ass guy died. And then they, like, go in his apartment. And they just, like, take shit in it. And he, like, finds the piles and piles of pages of the Navitson records. And he takes them. And then he tries to put them together and one thing he realizes really quickly is that there's a lot of different pages that are in misplaced order there's a lot of stuff that Zampano wanted to destroy um, we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly he tried to cross out from the book in a little bit but like the book in itself became a mystery for Johnny because it was a mystery because like two chapters in he's like okay why is this guy describing photos in such a cure accurate details he's blind how did how did that happen and also a lot of pieces of information that johnny sees don't match up and then throughout the entire book you see the entire house of leaves the navitson record eat johnny like it eats at him like a fucking disease like he gets because johnny Johnny's writing style is really, really interesting because from the beginning, he is already really scrambly, right? Like, yeah. rambly, I mean, not scrambly. Like, he rambles a lot. Like, three three lines of straight up one sentence that goes nowhere. He's just like, no comma, no period, nothing. He just like fucking goes at it. <laughs> and it is very, it's a very interesting and it shows how eclectic he is from the beginning. From the beginning, we see that um, he has already a lot of issues. What is not re revealed like very far apart is that he has consummation issues and a lot of like spatial loss of time. Like he loses a lot of like shit, but the more it goes upon the book, the worse it gets. Yeah. And that is something that really got me on is that every time like, because... A lot of time, like, I love Johnny, I really do, 
a lot of times I, I like was rolling my eyes when I got to a Johnny part because I just wanted to read what Zampano was to say because like this book is really interesting in the way that it it's technically an essay but it is so fucking interesting. I am so interested by the book like every time I was turning a pages I was like oh my god that's really cool but the more you went into it the more the Johnny pieces were like getting really 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 good. Yeah it sort of drags you into the story as you go. Because at first you're really more interesting, interested in um, the Navitson record, and you kind of wish Johnny would shut up a little bit, but the more it goes, the more you see how his life ties into the book, or how the, the narrative ties into his life as well. You start putting pieces together, and the next thing you know, you're so invested in Johnny's story and what's going to happen next to him, and a little less with what happens in the Navitson record. Well, it's because really quickly you realize that Johnny is Nevitson. Like, not, like, really, but they're, like, a lot of times, they're, like, a one-to-one -one comparison. Like, a lot of times something happens to Nevitson, and something similar happens to Johnny, and you realize that, like, the book is becoming his life. I, I think, I also think it could be, um, the other way around, where... <laughs> Johnny starts to project his life onto the book and because he's the one that wrote it that wrote the yeah. version that we have so who knows how many things he could have changed to reflect his life um, in one of the earlier chapters um, a character says that there's no more uh, hot water in the Navitson house and mm -hmm. the next thing Johnny says is oh guess what no more hot water for me too um, yeah. And it's a very short, small thing, but then you start to think, oh, was that actually in the book and did it happen to Johnny at around the same time when he wrote that passage? Or is it something he added post uh, mm -hmm. to, to make it fit his life a little more? I think it's interesting that Johnny's, um, a lot of Johnny's character revolves around solving puzzles and cracking codes. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. In, in letters to his mother, that's what he does, and he's done that for a lot of his life, and as soon as he gets a hold of the book, that's what he does. Mm -hmm. It becomes a puzzle that, like, sucks him in and he can't do anything about it. Yeah. One thing that I'm gonna say, like, I was- you just mentioned the letters to the mother, and that's where I wanted to go. And I think one thing that was really interesting and different in our reading experiences is that you waited until the end to read the Pelafina letters. And yes. I did not. And I think it really impacted a little bit our reading of the end of Johnny's story. Because the book is formatted that, like, the essay part is like 500-ish pages long. But then there are an additional 200 pages of indexes. Like, there's a full-on index of every word. And every word that's in the, like, Navidson record. And some words that are not in there. It's very interesting. Yeah. Um... I know you have, like, all the ones that are not in there, like, you are <laughs> yeah. a funny guy. But, um, there's one specific page that I think is the most interesting part, and I know, I'm pretty sure that the author knows that as well, because he published the this part as a separate book. But the Pelafina letters are really interesting. They are really, really cool. Um, so Pelafina is Johnny's mother. When you read the letters, you realize... A little bit Johnny's story because really early on you learned that Johnny has um, these burn scars on his forearms at first it's a little like mysterious how he got them then there's a mention that it's because of them that he went through a lot of families like that rescued him and then you learn that he had a lot of trauma with those families because it was not their like they were not his bio family and they were mean to him and then, in the Pelafina letters, through the letters, you learn that the mother is at a, like, psychiatric hospital, I'm pretty sure? Like, yep. an hospital, like, an inpatient hospital that takes care of people who have psychoses and stuff like that. And you learn through the pages that Johnny really, really loves his mom and sees himself as being the same as his mom, a fighter, whatever. And she uses that, too, in her letters, well... 
like trying to come off as nice, but then being a little manipulative, I'd say, in a lot of the letters. Not necessarily on purpose, but she was definitely like trying to come off on him. Like he was a kid and she was like, oh my God, I miss you so much. And I want you to, like, I want to be back. And then like, that's why he has a lot of resentment towards his bio father at some point. Because you learn later on that the burn marks come from his mother because she had an episode and she thought that the only thing, that the world was so dark that the only thing that could save her son was killing him. This letter like kind of broke me honestly because like obviously I'm not saying that the mother, like I'm not, obviously she has a lot of part to, to do in it and it's a very like horrific story. But on the other hand, I also have a lot of empathy for Pelafina. And I think that's because of Johnny's, like, point of view, obviously. But the way that, like... But as, she... as for mm -hmm. the story of the burn marks, I think um, Johnny even goes into it explaining what it was from his point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it was her on purpose that did that. But then again, they're both unreliable narrators, so who knows re what really happened. Yeah, well, um, maybe I them. interpreted it, maybe I'm adding a fourth layer of meta. But the way I understood the story is that she really had an episode and it's oil that dripped on him. Like, she, she poured oil on her son. And right after, she had a moment of realization because he didn't die. So then she had a realization of, oh, fuck, I did that. And then she immediately apologized and immediately, like, it was an accident or, like, she talked to him. And I think that's one of the reasons why later on he's, like, not putting it on her. Because I do think that, like, when you're such a young child and your mother is, like, I, I don't know. I This is a very, like, <laughs> I don't think there's a single, like, good narrator in that story. I think they're all fucked up. Positive. It's really fun to read. But I don't think any of them are reliable in a way that makes you think like, oh, that's the truth. And I think that's one of the things that makes me like this so much. Yeah, I mean, for, like, I mean, just the fact that the book is written, um, is written, is technically rewritten by Johnny. And you yeah. know, since day one, that he's not a reliable narrator. It makes every, makes you question pretty much everything that's in this book. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that's what's so interesting because like Angel read it first, but when I was reading it, I kept sending them like, oh my God, is that what's going on? Because like, you have to like analyze it. It's a very, very fun book for that. Last thing I want to mention on Johnny before, well, we're going to cross the lines a little bit because the next thing I wanted to talk about is the narrative and the themes. And I think that with Johnny, I think the one thing we cannot pass upon is the Minotaur. I know you love the Minotaur. I, I know adore you do. the Minotaur. And I think it's really funny because you mentioned this when I was reading and I was sending you stuff that you thought it was really interesting because I have a lot of prior knowledge on Greek mythology because I love Greek mythology. And I got a lot of things that you did not, but also you got a lot of scientific shit that I didn't got because you are more scientific than me, I guess. <laughs> and... It's really, really interesting. Let's talk about the theme of the Minotaur. So earlier on, I was talking about the Zampano shit that, like, Zampano tried to remove from the book. And we know that because Johnny says, Oh, it's a little weird. Every time there's a mention of a Minotaur, it's, it looks like Zampano wanted to scribble it out. But Johnny keeps it in with a red font crossed out, which is very interesting. Which makes it just pop out even more that... It was something that Zampano tried to remove, but Johnny just made it more obvious to the reader. And the theme of the Minotaur is that really quickly you realize that Johnny, subconsciously or not, sees himself as the Minotaur. Um, and then everyone in his life, and I thought that was so fucking interesting. Okay, so let's talk about Thumper. Thumper is this one girl that Johnny met. I'm pretty sure she is a sex worker, but he... Yes is not that interested in sex with her. Like, he is, but not. He is, but he's not. But Yeah, he's, compared to the other women he meets, he's more interested in a romantic relationship with her than he is for just sex. He, as much as Johnny can, he respects her. <laughs> yeah. As, as much as he is capable of. My favorite sequence of the book, and I, I'm pretty sure it's yours too, maybe I'm wrong, but my favorite sequence of the book is the Minotaur scene. So there's one scene that Johnny wakes up from a dream and describes a dream. And in the dream, 
his scars on his forearms grew all the way upon his chest and back and then his face was deformed and he could feel horns on his head and could feel some fuzzy like hair growing on him and, and then he, he can't speak but just grunt and make yeah. noises so he becomes for like a better term the minotaur and then in the dream there's a frat boy with firefighter x that goes at him but he's really bad and so johnny takes him out and then thumper arrives and takes that and then you learn that in this meta narrative and that theme of the minotaur thumper the only one that like johnny like cared about and liked became theseus and she was there to murder him in the dream and i'm pretty sure she does she like put the axe very deep into his neck which freaks him out so that was the first thing i was like when angel told me that thumper was theseus i lost my fucking mind because i never saw it like i i, I didn't connect the dots at i all. did not say thumper was theseus sorry you did not I do not. Who did you say with Theseus? It's the Gdansman, and Kairi can be read as Ariane. <gasps> Maybe we have different interpretations. Yeah, yeah, I we do... have we do have different interpretations because um, when uh, when there's the bit about the Minotaur that uh, Zampano writes, he writes mm -hmm. that um, Theseus is depicted as a quote drunken fat boy, mm -hmm. and I felt like Gdansman represented that a lot of. Mm -hmm just causing destruction because for the sake of it almost um mm -hmm. and johnny fights back which is not expected and mm -hmm. um there's the whole scene there's a whole fight scene that really made me see the parallels between maybe a little bit of um the myth of the minotaur and um uh ariane watching theseus fight the minotaur mm -hmm. Uh, so that's that's where I got my interpretation of the myth of the mentor, but I also like your interpretation of um, Thumper being uh, Theseus in mm -hmm. a way. Yeah. Another thing that was like really interesting was the Pelafina. Of course, we already talked about it, but I do think that uh, Pelafina is pacify. Which is the mother of the Minotaur in canon. Yeah, the, so, that's that's what you brought. Uh, yeah, that something you mentioned to me, and I hadn't noticed, and I'm really glad you mentioned it because it makes a lot of sense, especially for um, the King Minos thing. Yeah, well, that's where I was going as well because, like, yeah. the story of the Minotaur is that uh, it is the child of Pacify and a bull. So if we go in that comparison, so Pelafina, the mother, is Pacify. And Johnny's bio dad is the bull. And he dies, by the way. And then when he goes into his adopted family, the dad that beats him up and is mean to him is King Minos. Which in the story of the Minotaur, King Minos tries to kill the Minotaur, tries to get him away. Obviously, he has to build a giant fucking labyrinth to get the Minotaur away from him. I do think that it is very interesting to see that, like, we went to so deep into the comparison that, like, you can figure out that, like, the adopted fathers, because I'm pretty sure, like, that's the main one, the one that, like, beats, like, Johnny up, that is a very, very aggressive person, is, like, the main King Minos. But I'm pretty sure he mm -hmm. goes through a lot of, like, adopted family. And through all of them, you can see some aspect of the original myth and that was a really, really interesting theme, I thought, of, like, I, I don't know, I really, I I'm a sucker for every time there's, like, a reimagining of something. And I think this was a really interesting reimagining, because it is in your face, yes, because the Minotaur is a very big theme in the book, but it's also not so in your face that you're, like, you know where it's going, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of a domino fall. It's, like, the moment I realized that, like, Pelafina was Pacify then it's like oh then who is this and then who is this and then you start building that web of oh my god i know who these people are yeah and i think that's really really cool i know the archetype they represent yeah literally and it's that was one of my favorite thing is there another theme you want to talk about no i think we touched upon all the ones i wanted to talk about at least a little bit yeah, well, there's an Echo one that was really cool. Like, it's not a theme as much as just, like, a part of the narrative. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just, like, 
I think it's a really good chapter because it yes. just like goes into how like it, I don't know it, goes, it, it, it goes into it goes into the uh, actual like physics aspect of it with the acoustics and everything what makes an echo an echo and it also yeah. goes into the myth of um, echo and what makes her um, a figure uh, that you know just reflects the words of others and then yeah. weaves all of that into the narrative and um, just for a short bit of text that is like oh the echo in the house is much bigger than it should be and I think another thing that was really interesting in that chapter is it was exploring how fucking big the house is because the house is fucking massive but how very big spaces like this can make you feel claustrophobic almost mm -hmm. when something becomes so fucking big that you feel trapped and I thought that was like a really cool because we didn't talk a lot about the house yet but like and I don't think there's a lot to say about the house, except that, like, it is freaky. But, it yeah, is, and, like... And um, it's also to be said that um, Karen is claustrophobic, right? Yeah. And as soon as she even sees the hallway, the new hallway in the house, and yes, it's bigger than it should be, it still triggers her claustrophobia. So mm -hmm. it is it is really interesting how, yes, the space is bigger than it should be, and it is really big. And it's huge and it goes so far but it's still something claustrophobic because it's not it's not supposed to be like that yeah and, and yeah i thought like this was probably one of my favorite like concept i guess from the house because like obviously the house is really cool and very big and very interesting but i think one of my favorite part was the way it explores how big spaces can make you feel trapped and i thought that was I don't know, I, it really resonated with me somehow. It was really, okay. really cool, I thought. And yeah. so I think we're left with the last part of the narrative I want to talk about, which probably can spring some theories. So, in the last few pages of the Navitson story, Navitson is really, really fucking deep in the house. And he brought with himself a bike that he lost, some food that he lost, some water that he lost. Matches. And a book. And then he somehow gets stuck on the pillar with nothing below, nothing above. And he's like, oh, well, I'm going to read a book. And then he starts reading House of Leaves by Johnny Truant. Well, to be fair, the, bo the book um, is just mentioned to be House of Leaves. But yeah, it's around 700 pages. Yeah, it's described like exactly as a book that you're reading. So at that moment, you're reading the third meta narrative. In which someone is reading the first layer of the meta narrative, and it was freaky. <laughs> it was, it really was good. very freaky. It was very good, um, but it adds like a sense of oh my god, what the fuck is going on? For a character in the narrative to read, to read a book that is at this point outside of the narrative, and about because, the narrative, and about the narrative, because. You have you have so many layers. You have Navitson who should not have access to his story, or if it even is his story. You have Zampano who doesn't know that the story has been being rewritten yet, and then you have Johnny, who. I mean, he's reading about the way that his yeah the thing he's writing is being read. So it was just like layers upon layers of this shouldn't make sense. Why is he reading this book? And then in the narrative, he like there's no light in the house, so he starts burning the pages to be able to read it. Yeah, and then because he, reads... he runs out of matches. Yeah, so like he just like burns a page and then go to another page, and then he like destroys completely House of Leaves before it is written. It's it's very interesting. That was like, it, it was just I, I don't know. I'm just putting this out there. Um, if you have a theory. Go for it. I don't know. It is just fucked up. And I love it. It, it was one part yeah. that made me go, hell yeah. And that's the same thing with um, when Johnny's at the bar. And, like, because at the at the end of the narrative, Johnny has lost, like, six months of his life to a year, to two years. Like, there are bits and pieces to his life that he doesn't even fucking remember. There's nothing left. He is fucking gone. And he comes across a bar and... People are singing a song, and he talks to them and learns about it. And it's because they have learned of 
a book called House of Leaves on the internet. And they are... They fell in love with the book, and they're like, Oh my god, I wonder what happened to Johnny. Is he still in, like, Hollywood? Blah, blah, blah. And then Johnny's right there. Johnny doesn't know that he has published it anywhere. Johnny... Mm -hmm. And again, that is so interesting to see, like... Was Johnny even real? Like, was the Johnny we were reading about even the real... Like, is this all a fantasy? And I think... I think that's a book that really sells you on the idea of... Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> what is going um, on? This is a little bit less of a theory, just something mm -hmm. meta that I thought was interesting. Is that um, Danielewski's sister uh, mm -hmm. is like a musical artist. She does music. Um, and she has the music about House of Leaves, especially like when they were working on the book a little bit together. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, to have one in the book, people that do music about the book mm -hmm. uh, is really interesting. And also the fact that House of Leaves spawned a couple of musical artists that also do music inspired by House of Leaves is mm -hmm. also really fucking interesting that um, cr a creative project can inspire other creative people, but while also, I don't know, like bringing up the fact that creative people will do that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I don't know how to explain it. It's just like something, it, it's a little bit of a meta layer that's added onto it, but with I the real world. I think that's a very really good way to wrap up this book. I don't know how to explain it, but it is very cool and meta. Yeah. I think that's just what this book is about. <laughs> that That is just what the, this book is. I think this was a really good book. Thank you for giving me so many mental illnesses with this. Um, <laughs> no problem. I, I think it is I really funny it that I had never learned, like, heard of this book before. And since ever I started writing it, I can now see it everywhere. Like, it is yeah. everywhere. Every bookstop I go to, there's one or two copies, and it makes me go fucking insane. I don't know if I spawned this, I don't know if I'm trapped in the book. Is Am I stuck? <laughs> so, thanks a lot, Angel, for coming. <laughs> thanks for doing a piece uh, for this video, which was really, like, cool, and I really much like it. And you're gonna have seen it throughout the video, people. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go on to the montage in a little bit, and thanks, Angel, and I hope you come back soon ish on the video if there's anything else you want to talk about with me yes yes of course so for this piece i as you can see throughout the video it was pretty long because it was about it was a really long piece to do to be fair but um the concept was that i wanted to recreate this piece of fine art because once again i am a really big sucker for everything greek mythology and fine art so in the renaissance when they did a lot of like paintings inspired by greek mythology all of it i love it i want more when i was looking for inspiration for the piece i wanted to do for house of leaves i found this iconic picture of the minotaur and i was like oh let me recreate this because johnny is the minotaur but johnny is also afraid of the beast so let's make it I didn't procreate. It took me about, like, I think about 20 hours, but I was watching stuff at the same time. So let's say about 15 hours total. It was really fun. I could have done it inside to, like, do a screen cap and be able to have it completely. But I thought it would be better in procreate just because I'm more used to procreate and I wanted to, like, have a very specific style with it. So that's what I did. I really, really liked the value. I played a lot with uh, Grayscale, which I don't usually do, but it was really fun and a really different experience and a really fun practice. As for Angel's Beast, and this is the house. They did it in Clip Studio Paint. It is really cool. I really like it. It's a picture of the house with the labyrinth under. Um, it is really cool. I think you should go follow Angel on Tumblr. Their link is going to be in the bio. So, Thanks a lot for coming. It was a really, it was a real pleasure. This is not a short positive review. It is just a positive review. Um, I really liked House of Leaves. It was a really fun book. It was really interesting, really meta, really cool. I've had the conversation about it. You've heard it. Thanks a lot. I really recommend it. And yeah, so all my social media is going to be around the screen. If you're here until right now, I'm so happy that you've enjoyed my silly little conversation with Angel. And I love you a lot. And I'll see you soon. See ya.